Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Natasha Banks. Look who's here. This, well, you might not actually recognise her, but, but you've seen her designs. Uh, this is the lady behind Cats and Trees and various other goodies. It's Kath Hardcastle. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. Um, absolutely thrilled to have you here. Thank you so yeah, much. It's a pleasure. It's been a bit of a trip, yeah, isn't it? It yeah. has. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, massively, massively appreciative of you coming down. Last night was, uh, well, hang on. Let me show you what we did last night. With a glass of wine in hand, <laughs> this happened. It was like an adult jigsaw, basically, with wine. Yes. 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 <laughs> we had to sort of slow the wine down at one point. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, and we did that for you. See the sacrifices we made? I know, I know. I know there's one eager fan waiting, waiting in the wings, watching this go together. So. Should we show them what we're doing then? Yes. Wait. Oh, the, the cushions. cushions! It would help. Um, this little trap, by the way, is just a, a sneaky cheese for things that are in the pipeline. Rather gorgeous, isn't he? Now, you have got two options on the website today, www.natashamakes.com. Details down there. Uh, and this is, I think we've called him Jasper. Dark Shades. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dark, Dark Shades. Shades. Jasper Bunny and Dark Shades, because that's what... What we've done we have sourced fabric so that you don't have to because um kath is particular about her fabrics and that is not a bad thing at all i don't mean that in a bad way it's as in you know there's no point in you going to all of this trouble to get this effect and then people at home trying to do it in fabrics that just won't work that's right so yeah. there was quite a lot of back and forth in trying to source the right fabrics that would work beautifully yeah <laughs> yes um so you can buy the kit to it this is a big big cushion actually how big are we looking at it's about 19 inches finished nice. 18 and a half 19 inches you need a 52 by 52 centimeter pad to and go inside from um, some sort of i got myself um, yeah shop yes yeah they're, they're readily available yes um but the kits are not readily available anywhere apart from here yes hooray so um we did a couple of things, didn't we? And this was really important to you uh, because when they've gone to air before, they weren't available as just the pattern. That's right. So today, just the pattern is available by itself. But we have also got kits. So we've got dark tone Jasper and then light tone Jasper. And I'll show you the kits because they're slightly, they're slightly different. Yes. Um, because you haven't got the liberty surround. Uh, no. <laughs> we needed to keep it at, a, you know, at an affordable rate. Uh, so that is that is light tone, Jasper. And he's the, this is the colour we're going to work on today. Yeah, we're working on the light tone one, uh, but the dark tone one is equally as nice. We were sort of torn, weren't we? Which we were one really we were going to do? Torn, really torn. I think this comes down to personal preference and possibly childhood, what colour bunnies you had growing up. Right, yeah. Did you have rabbits growing up? I had a, I had one called Plenty, Plenty from the James Bond film, yeah. A little Dutch white miniature, so she was white with pink ears oh. and a pink nose and pink eyes. Um, my brother and I were given ones for, our, for Christmas yeah. and they were Holly and Ivy. Um, and then I had Alice, uh, who was a beautiful, beautiful lop. And we had Henry the French lop too, so we've had lots of bunnies too. Um, so the choices are yours. This is absolutely stunning. And Jasper is real. Yes, Jasper sadly was a real rabbit. I believe he's passed away now. Oh no! Yes. This is Jasper's legacy. Yes, it's Jasper Jasper's lives legacy. On. So there's it. So Lynn, sewing quarter fan, ex sewing quarter fan out there. It's her rabbit. Aww. She sent me a photo after a very long chat, believe it or not, over Christmas on yeah. Messenger. And I don't. It was very silly o'clock when we stopped chatting. I'm talking several wines and probably about three in the morning. She'll remember it. <laughs> and it's amazing what you agree to. Yes, isn't it? and, and as soon as wines. I had actually work, been working on another rabbit design, and as soon as she sent me the rabbit, the other one got put. Really? Yeah. As soon as I saw the picture, I said, "I, I can do something with that," and so we went ahead. So yeah. So a uh, very, very big thank you there for Lynn and, and her Jasper. <laughs> um, those down there for a second because I want to show you the kits that we've got so I said that ours is slightly different and for the 
the typical lights or the neutrals. lights the neutral tones this is the surround that you'll get so it's not the liberty fabric um you're going to go with a, a lovely a lovely purpley lilac so lilac yeah, yeah. lilac yeah. and that will be the color of the back as well so that will be the sashing yeah the backing and any binding yes you choose to do on your cushion now um let me show you the other oh, this all beautifully i know i and, know uh, and this yeah. is where we start losing little pieces, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Let me put this over to here so that you can see the kit that you're getting. Now, this is all. This is this is our working kit. So um, yours will come in the exact amounts that you need. But in your kit, you will basically get. Let me move it across to here, so that you can see. You will get your backing and your binding and your sashing. You will get four different Jasper fur tones. Yeah. You will get two different dandelion tones, uh, your dandelion fabric, and then this ivory is going to be your center panel for your cushion. That is your neutral kit. Let me pop that to one side here. Oh, just watch myself because I've got that. Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. I've got a bit of eye. <laughs> Stay there. Uh, right, and then your other kit, these are your dark tones here. So, again, you have one, two, three, four fur fabrics. And then you're, we changed it around because the lilac was going to be. That's right. And then we actually saw the blue with it and went, no, 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 no. The blue has got to go with these darks because it really pops. Uh, so, that will be your sashing, your binding, your backing, and then dandelion, panel in the front of the cushion, leaf fabric all in and if today you are buying um the fabric yeah and the pattern then at checkout you get a little discount yes yeah we've worked out a little discount so that anybody buying the kit together you know with the pattern then obviously they'll get a little reduction on the pattern yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah. it was just a little something from us to you just to say thank you very much for doing that I'm, is it me? Is it <laughs> I'm just taking everything. I know. Everything with me. You I've said you're going to. I'm sew going to sew feet. sew these. We, do you want me to bulldog? Clean we them we out actually. Or yeah, we, I'm either going to sew them or they're going to waft pieces on the floor, which they did do earlier this morning. So there we go. <laughs> it's all good fun. It's all good fun. Um, now, when we get, oh gosh, let me show you these, right? Because uh, these are your instructions. Now, I feel quite passionately about this. Especially now that I make my own instructions and stuff. The time and effort that goes into this, quite frankly, you should be paid double for this. <laughs> um, because I know the hours you spend in front of a computer putting all of these together, step by step by step. It is very, very detailed. And that you've got both colourways in here. And there are all of your pattern pieces. Oh, I've missed a page. Here are all your pattern pieces for you to trace. And these are actual size. Yeah. And if you are photocopying, there's your one inch square to double check that, you have, um, that you've done that. And so you've got a reference for Jasper there. And a reference for Jasper there, depending on what colourway you've gone with. And this is really nice quality paper too. It is, yeah. I was, I was really, really sort of um, eager to see what the quality was going to be like from this printer. Obviously, it's new to me getting print, uh, patterns printed. So, and the quality of the paper was paramount to me. So I'm with you on yeah, that. Yeah. I'm with you on that because I want longevity out yeah. of it. This will be something that you'll go to time and again to make. Um, so it's nice to have, have something that, is yeah. there and can be kept nicely. Yeah. Um, first thing that we do, what's the first thing that we need to do? Right, the first thing you need to do in the center of the pattern, there is actually a life-size Jasper. Now, unfortunately, I don't know if everybody oh. can see, yeah. there's part of his head and part of his body. Obviously, his body is upside down, but it's got a dashed line across the, across the bottom there. And it's also got a dashed line across the body. Do can't get, yeah, just can't get, can't get my angles right. Um, there you go. Yeah, 
basically, can you reach me the copy I did? You'll need a copy of this and sellotape it together. Now, this is to make life easier for you. You can, you can go without it and just put the pieces together yeah. um, just by looking at the images. That's not an issue. Um, but if you're wanting to use the method I'm going to use, then it does make life just that little bit easier. Um, so consequently, I've already done this. It's got the numbers which correspond to your shapes that you've cut out. Yeah. So you can just look for the numbered piece and it's basically like putting it together as, like a jigsaw. Okay. So it just makes life a little bit easier. Another thing that makes life easier is I use, I use the Fusimat version, um, but obviously there are other versions available. Now, let, let's talk about this. Um, the Fusimat is fabulous. It's brilliant. It is pricey. Yes, it is. Um, so we came up with a couple of alternatives to suggest yes. to you. Uh, and one of them is this. And this is a sugar work mat. Yeah. And they're available on Amazon. I got three for, I think, $11.99. What the difference is between that and a fuser mat, I don't know. No, no. But... Fuser mat's thicker, but other than that... that That's worked for me. Yeah. Now, it might not work, live for as long, I don't know, but for me, right yeah. now, that's good. Yeah. That's all good. So that's that's another alternative. You have another idea. I do. Which it's is even cheaper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we like. Everybody is familiar with greaseproof paper. Now... A lot of greaseproof papers come in that brown tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a parchment. Yeah. Tea. Yeah. This one, I didn't even realise when I bought it, I just needed some. Purely for trace work yeah. and, and things like that. It wasn't actually to do this. This was something that I sort of thought, I wonder if it works, and it did. Um, but this one was from my local spa. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Um, because a lot of others, they tend to be brown. Right, so um, for just normal... Yeah, but it wasn't an expensive box of it's just on a roll um but this one's white and i thought ooh, i wonder if so do you use that to trace with or just to press on if you haven't got a printer at home you could trace the full rabbit this this main master template onto that you could trace it on yeah oh. you could trace it on or you just lay it over the top can you see? We will be in just a second. So you can... And you can top, even, yeah. even with the cameras, you can see that black outline showing through. So basically what you're looking for is... It will work with the brown greaseproof paper, obviously, but what you tend to find is you lose the numbers a little bit. You'd have to blacken the numbers because they're red. Right. The red gets lost in the brown. So for anyone that is new to applique, yeah. what this is doing is... Jasper is quite detailed. He is, yes. He's so you, when you've cut out your template pieces, you will build him up step by step over the template to make yep. sure that you get Jasper in exactly the right place and you don't get an ear going off the wrong way. That's or right. Eyes yeah. a bit drunken. Um, I mean, he might have been on the red wine as well, it, to yeah. be fair. It so, just yeah. helps. Yeah. It yeah. just helps, yeah. Uh, so with the fuser mats and with the sugar work mats, yeah. you can see through as well. Yeah. So you would just, let me change that camera angle. Here he is again. And you will be able to see him just as easily through, through the mat. There. So you work him up yeah. on that mat. And what is that doing? It helps, it helps you position your pieces, but it also helps you locate them because you can see the numbered pieces right. on the working template that you're using here. Yes. So the numbered pieces, all you have to do, as long as this is very important, when you're actually tracing these off onto your bonder web, make sure you put the numbers on. Oh, yeah, that's going to help. It, that really does help, yeah. Now, obviously, you can always go back to your pattern book and think, oh, gosh, I didn't put a number on this one, and you can marry it up. So right. it's not a massive yeah. Yeah. thing. Um, but, yeah, when, it, when you're doing your templates, like I've done, I always 
label. I label them, I put the number on, I will work out, there is a, an image, a coloured image, which goes from light to dark, so I've done it in like monochrome, so obviously because it's in monochrome you can work it in any colour way, but yeah. you need four tones for the rabbit. So, so we've got dark, we've got, we've medium, got dark, dark, medium dark, medium, medium light. light. So I just put, on this piece it's light, so I've just put an L for light. Yeah. So when I've cut all my, when I've um, got all my bonder web shapes, I can put all my lights together, all my mediums, medium darks and darks. So I just pile them on each, on each fabric that it's corresponds. one of those things, isn't it? You'd think that actually sourcing those colours would be easy, but actually what we found was sourcing the correct tones yeah. that gave enough of a difference without being too similar, without having going from like, especially with the greys, yeah. you don't want to mix blue greys with brown greys exactly. or whatever. Um, it's harder than you think, which is why I'm always grateful for a kit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the tonal, but yet there'll be people out there, I'm sure, who have got a stash bigger than anybody's, who have got fabrics they can work with, and they may have to empty a few boxes to do it, but they'll work a colour a, yeah. a colour way out. Now, um, the sort of fabrics that you would recommend if people, because I know some of you will buy just the pattern alone because of yeah. said stash, um, just don't go with plain. Flat colours don't work with hairy objects, that's my, that's my thing. Go um, to the day. Yes. Yep. These particular fabrics, they've got like a water colour effect. Yes, they're textured, aren't they? They're textured, but they're not heavily textured, so it's it's the type of colourway we've gone for on the, the type of fabric. Most people can't fall out with it. It's not like it's got an exact pattern in. Right. But, I mean, the light tone one that I made at home, I actually used a very, very small ditzy flower pattern. Mm. Um, all slightly different ditzes, but they were still subtle enough to all blend together. But I did incorporate one plane, and that was just for the dark tones, which there's only a small amount of. Okay. So consequently, it depends on how people want it and what okay. it's what they have to go for. You know, what what is to go with. So I'm going to let you show on the mats. Yeah. Um, I am again having trouble with my mic. I'm going to change the batteries on my mic. Oh, see right. if that helps. Um, so yeah, have a show us show us the mat. The mat, right? Let's just get things moved around. Now there's a couple of key steps just to start you off. The first part, obviously, is the fiddly bit, which is the eye. Um, a lot of people who've bought my patterns in the past will know that nine times out of ten, I put the eye together first, and probably another couple of sections. So let me just get a pin to hand. So the first part is obviously get your eye pieces together, which is he's got a brown eye. I've got the white piece, which is the eye white, and I've got the pupil. First part to do is take the paper back in off your iris and off your pupil. Now, when I'm cutting out pieces, you will notice on the pattern pieces it's got a lot of dashed lines. When you're tracing out, just put an indication of where these dotted lines are. They don't have to be perfect, but where the dotted lines are indicate that another fabric, another piece is laying over the top. Okay? But on the eye, I've actually put the dotted line to indicate... Ooh, let's get a close-up Yeah, here. There it, we go. It indicates where, where the iris and the pupil are. Okay? Now, yeah. if you... When you're putting them together, if you hold it up to a light or pop it over a light box, can't see it very well on that one, but I can see it. Pos you probably can't, but I can see where these are going. So I'm going to lay my iris, followed by my pupil. I've left the paper back in intentionally on the back there. Yeah. And then we're going to press that into position. Okay. So, I am is my on. Eye. Now, what we've got today is, and I'm hoping that's that's all better. Um, we've got obviously we're working on a sugar work. If you've got a fuser mat, great. We're working on our House of Alistair pressing mat. 
Yes. Which has been invaluable, actually. I know it? I've got my eyes on one. Um, I think you are being sent one. Yes. <laughs> it's all good. Yes. Um, and actually, we did this last night, didn't we? We had this out and we were, uh, we were working on this, pressing on this. Yeah. And actually, it helps hold the fabrics in place, yeah. which is even better. Yeah. Cool. Right. So, obviously, we have the eye done. The other piece that you can uh, put together, um, so you've got, you get rid of three pieces in one, yeah. as it were, um, is the nose. Now, it incorporates, obviously, his frilly nose section and his nostrils. Mm -hmm. But what we can do, we can piece this together. It's less pieces to be jiggled about when you're putting them together. Nose jiggling. Yes. So I find if you can get rid of, in fact, I don't think we're going to leave that light box. Should I get rid? Yeah. Okay. Now, his nose, you will see where the position is. It's not sort of rocket science this bit. You just need to, you know, look at the, look at the diagram underneath your mat there. I've popped his nose roughly about there it's just on a slight tilt and I've just laid my nostrils underneath now if if you're like me you should be able to feel around the edges just lift it up a little bit if need be just to make sure you've got enough fabric and it's not too close to the nostril edges so you've got your nostrils behind which are a slightly darker tone and then this is where you work so differently to to other um, artists that do applique. Oh, right. Because normally, when I've seen it, they build up, whereas you build the details in. Yeah. So where there's a, like the nostrils, yeah. obviously they go in. So you've... I put them behind. Yeah, whereas most, most appliques will just put something darker on top on top yeah but for you you're getting you're getting that that's what i love about your work i remember doing your screen test and i couldn't work out what on earth was going on <laughs> she was layering up in a way that i'd never ever seen i was like what what is going on but that's the difference and that i think is what sets your work apart and it's just gorgeous just gorgeous well any animal i mean i'm an animal artist yes so consequently you look at any animal it's 3D. Yeah. If you imagine a cylinder, but then sort of you, you look at a cylinder shape and you've got the front of the cylinder shape, that stands forward yes. of the sides of the cylinder yes. shape. And if you look at an animal or even a person's face, you know, your nose is going to be the bit that's on top. But your nostrils aren't. They're going to sit behind because they're set further back. And this is where you approach it in a, a way that I just you just don't see necessarily, which is uh, what I love. Well, as I said, that's that's the reason behind it's a good thing. it. It's a yeah, good thing. It's definitely a good um, thing. And I know a lot of people. I mean, obviously, this particular design, yes, it is quite intricate to cut out. It didn't take. It doesn't take long. It didn't. It took us an evening, um, didn't it? But well, when, with both of us doing it, it took probably about an hour. But you will need. You see, some of the shapes I could manage with my big um, Fiskars scissors. Other ones, you will need some really sharp snips. I must admit, it yeah. does make a difference. You can get into. Sorry, I could do with a bin. I've got one down here. For <laughs> I'm all. I'm all over it. I'm all over it. Right, that section's done. Uh, there is a foot section. I, I'm not going to bother with that bit. It's only one tiny bit that goes on, but we can we can okay. get round that. So right. So we're starting with to make life easier. Let's get this eye in position because eyes are always moving when you're piecing things together because this lays behind another piece. Now I don't know if you can see clearly, but I can see an outline of where his eye is. Mm. I'm just going to lay that over the top and just get my edge in roughly. This is a guide, remember. It's not, it's just there to help you get your positioning correct. And then we are going to pop his eye behind. And you just need it so oh, the, majori look at him. the majority of the pupil and the brown is virtually covering the whole top of the eye and the white which gives him that bit of a doe-eyed expression yes. yes there's just the white showing at the bottom and just 
press. Well, it would help if I took the paper back in. Oh, that, no. oh come Slacking. on. You Slacking. want everything you do, don't oh. you? I blame my assistant. Oh, yeah, blame me. <laughs> so much. We'll try that again. Right. It won't be the first time I've done that. You did say last night. Yeah. Why normally? Only you said it was the, the white the, of the, the eye. The white of the eye. I always forget to take the paper back in <laughs> off the white of the <laughs> eye. And it's usually when I've pieced several pieces together yeah. and they're overlapping yeah, the no, paper of bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, there is one good thing. If you're using a fuser mat yeah. and you're not putting your pieces directly mm. onto your cushion front and, and going, going for it without the guides, is if you actually make an error... Normally, it's really hard, and especially when you've got a really frilly edge, it's really hard to pull those pieces of fabric apart, and you think, oh, I'm going to have to cut another two, two pieces out because I've ruined it. Okay. With this, and it works with the uh, greaseproof paper as well, if, say, you, you've done an overlap, and you think, oh, I needed to sandwich this next piece in between, yeah. what you can do, put your iron over the top of the section you need to yeah. take, pull apart a little bit, and as, just let some heat get into it to make the glue nice and pliable. Put your iron down immediately and just gently pull back. And it should pull back without leaving any residue. Oh, amazing. Okay. Yeah, it will pull back. Because that's, and that is the big draw of the fuser mat to anyone who is big into their applique. Is yeah. Is that, um, that it's kind of made up of weird little pockets inside, inside a silicon mesh, basically. Yeah. And that seems, and I don't know how it does it, it's wizardry to me, but when the glue is warmed on your, um, on your bonder web, it sort of, it pulls it towards it, but not, it doesn't let it go outwards. So you keep a clean iron. Yeah. Like at no point have we had to use a pressing sheet, have we? Because the, no. the glue just doesn't go, just doesn't go everywhere. Which if never, you've got an expensive iron, you know, yeah, actually, a never had an is a great investment. That. Right, what I'm doing now is I'm just setting up my ears ready. Now, obviously, part of these ears go under and over sections. Now, if you do it like this, they're laid ready for your next pieces to go on. Don't worry about the top bits yet. They can slide under. But what I'm trying to do is get this first section done, which does come together quite quick, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we did the prep last night, didn't we? We did the tracing. Well, you did the tracing. Yeah. Now, a note on tracing. Note on tracing? Upside down, back to front. The... Oh, when, when you trace off the rabbit. The actual... Uh, the rabbit, that's the right way around, ready to go. Right. All your pieces are the right way around, ready to go. There's only... So it's the bonder web that you have to trace on back to front. The bonder web, just check, trace it on the paper side and he will come out in the direction I've got. Now, if you, you, you might want him going in another direction. He could be going all over the place. Oh, he could be, yeah. I mean, if you've got a fancy uh, printer at home, you could maybe even enlarge him and put him on a, oh my a goodness. big quilt. Um, he could be the centre panel. There's of a options. Quilt. It'd be amazing. Right, this section I'm just going to lay on ready because it's going over the top of the eyepieces. I'm just going to slide that. Right, we've got that more or less right. And then, obviously, this is where his nose section can start to come into play. Make sure you overlap, obviously, because that's the last piece that goes over the top. So he's coming together already. The actual head... She really is, isn't he? Yeah. The head does come together really quickly. Now, I'm just going to give that a quick press, although I know there's other pieces to go in, but just this top section here... I'm just going to give it a quick press just to keep them together. So if I, you know, they're not going to go anywhere. But you could, in actual fact, without pressing, you could, now once you rise in position and everything else, you could actually just build around and get the whole face done, then press. Yes. Yeah. Um, but we're just, we're approaching it a slightly different way here, just so people can see how I'm piecing it. Um, the, only, the only tricky part I found on this particular pattern um, was when he come to just do his haunches. Right. But obviously we'll cover all bases on it so everyone we'll knows. We'll cover all haunches. We will, yes. Yep, yep, yep. Now obviously once you've pressed it does stick to your mat a little bit but as you can see it just peels, peels back. Away. It's clever. Lay your cheek in there. Cheeky. Okay, and we do have some side pieces. Now even I've got to 
look at the sorry i can't see the numbers properly on here so 14, 14 and 18 14 and 18 there so that one goes at the top it's all right you find on some of the smaller sections you may just need to just peek the bigger yeah. sections you can see the numbers quite clearly underneath but you can't see them very well if they're really narrow pieces and this yeah. one's a narrow piece Ali says that it looks like a lot of fiddly cutting out, but it's very effective, though. To be honest, Ali, we, um, it was very sociable, wasn't it, last It was, night? yeah. What yeah. I do is I trace all my pieces when I'm working on a project like this, and then I sit and watch the soaps on an evening and cut them out. <laughs> and then you don't feel like you've wasted an evening. It says a evening. real lot about me watching the soaps, yeah, but I don't I care. I right. don't mind admitting I watch I the soaps. I think that's all right. That's all right. Okay. And so, so down he goes. There's another cheek bit going in. Another cheek bit. And I know there's another really, if I can find it, does it? No, it's your sleeve. <laughs> no, there's another 11. It's number 11 and it's just a little side piece which goes at the other side of his face, which I've managed to get off without too much hassle. It's um, like painting by numbers. It is. Isn't it? But with fabric. Yeah. Oh, Nanny Muse just... Uh, just uh, just joined us. Hello, Nanny Mew. How are you doing, <laughs> my darling? Um, yeah. Right, we'll just get that pressed into place now. Can I spin him around to show everyone? Of course, yeah. Where I've just got the tops. At. I've just got the tops of his ears to do, but they're really straightforward. I'm gonna I'm gonna spin him around this one. There's a reason why I know somebody said there's a, it seems a lot of fiddly cutting. Um Yes, there is a lot of fiddly cutting, but if you're doing free motion embroidery on this, which I'd recommend on yeah. this particular design, uh, whether it's just lines or how I'm going to show you how to do him, yeah. um, I would, it, it aids the direction of where you're stitching. And that is the reason why there's lots of little snip outs and I'll show you when we come to the sewing part. Um, but it does, it does help, it, even me, you know, when, you, when you're working on a piece, you can't always, you can't always see properly the finished, how it's yeah. going to come out. Yeah, yeah. But if you have the feathers, for example, these feathers here, I don't know if you can see. Can we see that? If we s Just swizzle it round. It around to there. There we go. Yeah. So consequently, the direction of these is the direction of your needle. So it'd arc this way when you're putting your free motion in. You'll be working in a zigzag and following that round. So gradually, you're starting to change direction towards the points. You're just heading towards the points. If you wanted, you don't have to do as many snips. If you keep the basic pattern shape yeah you could take out some of the fiddly bits so the fiddly bits are there to give you a guide <coughs> yeah for your free motion so if you are happier with your free motion then you don't have to snip as much yeah but if you're not as um, comfortable with your free motion keep them in as your guide yeah there you go so as I say but it's for the sake of what hour and a half hour and a half of cutting yeah I mean even when I've done this on my own at home it's it's not taken very long you see i've just messed about moving the mat you can just there. line it straight yeah. up okay so we'll just let's let's just finish off these ears and then you can start to see the shape we're losing the, the sandy color the sandy color is getting lost a little bit with the on the mat yeah yeah i suddenly thought that we should because we had a conversation as to do we do the dark colored one or the or the neutrally <laughs> colored one we, we went we didn't think about the color of the mat did we didn't no. think about that Oh, George is watching. Morning, George. Morning, morning, morning. Um, mm -mm. Oh, Cheryl says that her daughter thought the black rabbit looked like uh, their Scotty uh -huh. at first glance. He's gorgeous. <laughs> everybody, everybody knows of a rabbit. Or even these days, uh, with pets at home and places like that, you can take yep. the kids to look at the rabbits. Yeah. Even I go see the rabbits. Yeah. Yeah. I always wanted um, a couple of pet rats, Oh! but no, no, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't allowed. Right, I'm just looking for a random piece, which it should what be does a it look smooth like? piece, it's the, oh, let's have a look, which one, which bit we're looking it's for? Number it's number nine, number nine. Number nine. Oh, is that one? No, number 21. We've lost a piece. We're, oh no. Oh, it's on the floor. 
Oh, oh yeah, it's you your know, toppets. Yeah, there you go. There's number have, nine. They have got everywhere, <laughs> haven't they? They are. There's a right. hollow by your foot. <laughs> it's, told you. I shouldn't have worn this. I should have put the jumper back on that. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Right. Number nine going in. Come in, number, number nine's nine. going in. It's just sliding underneath. And then we are almost there with the ears. Oh, morning, Sarah. Sarah's joined us. Uh, and Tim as well. Hello. And Debbie and Janet and Christina. Good morning to everybody. And Vanessa as well. Vanessa says the gyro cut would be good for this. Yes. Um, if, yes, because it, you've got... Yeah, you... Do you know, I, I've, I'm going to confess something now. I bought one of those and it's still in the packet. Yeah. I've not had a chance there to play with it There is a skill to it. I have had a play with it and there is a skill to it. So I would say if, you've, if you are used to it, then great. Yeah. But, you, yeah, it's get used to it first. So, <laughs> yeah. Right, number 19. So we're gradually working down now to his body comes together really beautifully. He does. He? I mean, once you get started, e it's easy. As I say, the only I found the fiddly a bit, bit was this bit here. It's just round his haunches. And if I do that once more, <laughs> those I've got a top clips are going to come I've out. I've got a top like Velcro. <laughs> I thought, oh, this will be this will be really easy wearable because it's sort of smooth and and yeah. and and sort You'll of cool comfy. to wear. Yeah. And as you can see, now he's starting to come together. Oh, here he is. Right, we can start to add the front paw. So, so far, what I have gleaned yeah. here is um, either use the, actually the mat that we're working on. Yeah. Um, or your baking sheet, whatever it is that you're working on, is vital. Yeah. And having something that you can actually see through so that you can match up. Because we're painted by numbers with fabric. Yeah. And lining everything up and trace and sort of putting it back. We've traced it off and now we're putting it all back under. My fuser mat's bigger than yours and consequently I can't see the bottom of the foot. But never mind. <laughs> if you're going to buy one of these sugar mats, I recommend that you buy the biggest size you possibly can. Mine, my fuser mat is actually slightly bigger than this. Um, well, yeah, but yours also cost about 70 quid. Oh, it this did, was yeah, pounds. it <laughs> did. But I don't know, do they do them in a bigger size? I don't know, actually, I don't know. I wasn't sure it would work. I bought it as an experiment to see. Yeah. And it's it's done all right. Well, it's done all right. So if, you, if you start to panic because you can't see the bottom part of his feet, don't worry, go back to the Just move. greaseproof paper and then you'll see the hole. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he is quite easy to peel only, off, isn't he? It's only, it's only literally the last centimetre and a half of the design that you can't see because of the red here. Yeah. Well, ready, ready brown. Uh, the, the fur coloured, as yes. we've... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so we can start to get the next... Caroline says, hi, Natasha and Kathy. He's beautiful. Thank you. And Ali says that she's loving it. She's learning so many new techniques. So oh, thank right. you, Kathy and Natasha. <laughs> Absolute pleasure. Oh, Sally Ann Harrison's watching. Morning, 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 morning. And Anne's just joined as well. And, uh, and Katie. On it all goes. Right. Now, do these go in numerical order? Um, no, but what I have done is you'll find, don't worry, there's a bit of piece to go in there if you're thinking there's a gap there, but it's not. It's just purely, there's a, another piece. And I can't see the number. Sorry, I'm having to refer to this because you can see the numbers better on here. Number 21. 21. Come in, number 21. Just double checking, I thought it was that one, but it's that long since I put him together. I've worked on two other designs since then. <laughs> now, the panda, is he... Is he one that you've been working he on? He is one. The pattern is nearly ready to go. Um, he needs. So he's a bit of a he's a bit of a tease. He is, yes. Um, Whilst you put that on, let me just. There we go. He's just behind. He's just behind. God, he's just peeking over your shoulder. Just one eye, over there. He's rather fabulous. All right, I think we're nearly done with oh, that. Oh, there we go. Just checking. I've got my overlaps. Now, if you're using free motion, sometimes what you find is 
um, when you put him together and hold him up to the light, you may find the odd pinhole every now and again when you haven't quite pieced something just where you've got enough un underlap and overlap. Oh, if there's you just, just a tiny find gap. It don't fret, don't, don't sweat it. So because, what would you do? Well, nine times out of ten, it's usually on where there's a, a join, where there's fa one fabric's going over another. Okay. So Occasionally sort of round, round a piece moves, you don't realise, and then when you hold it up, you think, and it, I'm talking less than a pinhead, you just see a little dot. So can you just go over it then with your... Free motion. Oh, there we go. Sorted. Nine times out of ten, it resolves the, the fact. It keeps it secure. It doesn't matter. So don't panic if that happens. As long as your rabbit looks good and it's all nice in proportion, no one's you know, gonna, no nobody's, no one's gonna nobody notice, is going to know. Design choices. It Design is, choices. yes. That's the one. Yeah. What's going on next? Where right, we we're going to start building up his back now. I've got to even I've got to think about this one. <laughs> number so number twenty three going in over it. That's his back, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, I just try and get a rough line, just just following the guideline mm -hmm. of, of of what's underneath. And then obviously this is where there is a bit of a fiddly bit because one of the pieces actually go it goes under and over. Um, and, and goes. Ooh. And is that all in the instructions? It's number 24 if you want to make a note. <laughs> number 24, I'm actually. I'm in number 24. It actually, what happens is, I'm I've left the paper back in on at the minute, it goes under there. Right. But it goes over the top of oh. that, um, go over the top of another piece. Right. But it'll come together as, as you see it. Right. But it's denoted that you just see sort of part of a, a, dot, a dashed line. Oh, let's show that close Can up. Can you see? Up, Do you want it over there? there? Yeah, lift it up a little bit. There we go, up on the side. There's a, a partial da dashed line. Yeah. And it's it's a bit of a giveaway because it's got a smooth line as well. And then it'll go into, if you look at the bottom, just that little rough rough bit. That's, that's I can't get my fingers right on this camera. There's a, that's the straight bit, and then it goes to the jagged bit. The right. jagged bit obviously lays over the it's top the of bit, another right. piece, but this other piece lays underneath. Cool. Yeah? Yeah, we're with so, you. So, right, even I need to uh, check my diagrams now. So, we're on 24. So, we've got 24. I'm just getting it laid out ready because it's... No, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. This is where, if anything goes wrong, it will do now. Oh, well, you know, yeah, no, no, absolutely no pressure then. No. None, no. none at all. None at, none at all. Right. So. So that bit goes on there. Right. So I've got number 25 laid over. You see, that one's moved already. So I just need to just, just keep checking your pieces. It doesn't, it's not a problem if it moves. You can soon get it back in some sort of. But there just has to be enough overlap for it to grip, there doesn't does. it? There does. Now, just at this bottom section, you can see how it follows the line mm. of the fur. So just make sure that you've got a decent overlap. So is that where the pinprick hole might occur? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But as I say, it's not, it's not a big issue. I mean, obviously, you don't want a great big line or a gap. Yeah. Um, but even then... Even then, you could improvise, but it depends on where it is in the actual design. Come on, give us your rubbish. I know, I'm just collecting it over here. It's all good, it's all good. Right, number 27, and I've got a 26 to slot between. Now, Anna Sewing Nut yeah. says uh, that she's trying to read something about the intricacies of shaping armholes, oh. but this is far more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying in a good way. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're better than We're an armhole. We're covering the pits of a rabbit <laughs> rather than. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as compliments go, it's got to be up there. More entertaining than an armhole. Uh, you know what can I say? Dig around, you'll find a compliment in there somewhere. Uh, who else have we got watching? Uh, Anne says, uh, couldn't see it at first, but he's coming together and making more sense as you're going along. Great demo. Uh, and let's switch so you can actually see it. There you go. Right. There we go. It's just starting now. 
it do, it does take a little while doesn't it to get your eye in it does yeah and if you've never tried applique before as well it can seem really daunting and also because your applique is different in terms of the the nose is recessed rather than people just putting things on and the eye is recessed as well but it's not well, i it, think once somebody shows you how to do it oh you you won't go back and there is nothing won't worse i always with the eyes, when you're putting them together, when you're putting eyes together, um, especially when I did the dog cushions and what have you, it's really hard so you can get them so that they're just not cross-eyed. You know, it's you don't want a cross-eyed dog, not unless it's intentional. You know, unless you're doing Clarence the Cross-Eyed Lion, who many people might not remember, but I do. <laughs> Stephen said to me yesterday when we were walking the dogs, he looked at Margot, our great day, and he went, yeah, she's a bit cross-eyed, isn't she? Oh! She was just concentrating. It's it's yeah, tough for a girl. Me. She'd seen She'd me. seen something. <laughs> the end of her nose or something. Poor right. thing. Now there's a foot section which goes at the bottom, which you can't. I can't actually see because it's under my mat. So I'm just double checking. Yeah, it's all right. I've got it roughly where it needed to be. There's a little piece that goes over the top, which probably we've lost. <laughs> Oh no! We're on the final hurdle. There's there's two or three pieces to go together now. Okay. Um, and then we're on with the dandelions. Oh well, who doesn't want to be on with the dandelions, yeah. eh? So I'm just going. In fact, I'm going to cheat now. I'm just going to fuse. Do a, a bit. few. Yeah, just just fuse a little bit together. Leave the edge. I've left this sort of bottom edge here and here. Yeah. I've just left that edge because that's the bit I'm working on. But I know full well. If I start to lift those pieces, they're all going to slide. They're all going to move. Shuffle under, so yeah. just get a bit down there. Yeah. Um, Jane says, are you demonstrating the panda behind you? No, this is, this is the rabbit. This is the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know, know if you meant, like, is this the rabbit or is this the panda? I know what she means. She yeah. means, am I going to be demoing the rabbit at some point when he's out? The panda. The panda, yes. Okay. So, um, sorry, the panda. We're teasing you with the panda, uh, <laughs> Jane, basically. And, um, yeah, at some point... We're hoping Hopefully, he, will, he yes. will come to air. And um, Daktari? Just oh, Daktari, yeah, the cross-eyed lion. Is that, oh, was that the name? Yeah. I don't, you say, I, no, I don't know that one. Yeah, you were, you're far too young. Now, Vanessa, <laughs> oh, thank you. Say that again. <laughs> say that. Hang on, hang on. To There's camera. people of a certain age bracket who will not remember that. It's <laughs> normally me referencing things. Do you remember Skippy the Kangaroo? Oh, only like the name as, as yeah the name but i wouldn't necessarily like if i met him in the street <laughs> apart from it being a bit What's weird that to say <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah wasn't that used in an advert probably just from an advert it was from an advert actually they did do an advert yeah on, yeah what's that he's in the well <laughs> yeah 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 something yeah. like that yeah no that Brought way back go. so many yeah. memories <laughs> <laughs> but no, normally it's me making references and Josh and SJ just look at me because they're babies, really. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah. And then I have to go and ask my husband because he's 10 years older than me. So oh, so that's, that's, that's awful, that. You, you sort of uh, bringing your husband into it. Are you implying that your husband's older than you? 10 years, yeah, absolutely. An entire decade, <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So oh, I, I don't need to imply. He absolutely is. Absolutely is. And, um, There's one piece. Oh no! <laughs> one piece. <laughs> and we won't find this one. It's a little narrow one. Do you know? I probably threw it in the bin. Oh no! Have you got it? <laughs> She's got it! She's got it! Yes. <laughs> you see, I hoovered before you came. Ah. The floor was not like this before before you arrived. I've uh, seen your Hoover. You press a button and it goes. Oh no, not that one. <laughs> not that one. That one's for kitchen only. Um, <laughs> no, I, I do have a robotic one. Uh, no, I, I, no, I do proper Hoover. Proper Hoover. No, oh, I do right. have one of those little robotic ones because we were laughing because they're normally the ones that you see on YouTube with like a cat or a tortoise or yeah. something sat on it, just zooming around. Yeah. And that is my absolute having children. That is my my absolute saving grace they eat the hoover goes on it does its stuff we do our stuff best present ever <laughs> any other kind of hoover if Stephen had bought it for me as a gift no 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 <laughs> um no no there would have been there would have been some sort of domestic upset shall right. we say but this because i don't actually have to do anything with it saves time and everything else that's him pretty much hang on hang on hang on this is monsieur rabbit 
spin them around. Let's take a little look. There he is looking, I have to say. I, was say I love him in the marmalade colours. They really... They're gorgeous, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. As soon as I saw that, um, that this particular colour, I thought, oh, God, I've got to work That's something the one. out there. Yeah. That's the one. Oh, I think he's fab. Good. good so, good, right, good, good. so the hard work's done with the rabbit and the dandelion leaves, they're fairly straightforward. In fact, we can start removing those. Just like to say, I cut out the dandelion leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do they still look like dandelion leaves? Have we all right. Let's <laughs> hope so. Let's hope so. So we do we take this away now? Um, yeah, we can actually. We can work directly on the cushion. Obviously, we don't need the rabbit template anymore. So now we can work directly onto it. And this yeah. is where the pressing mat comes into its own because it's a great size. So I'm just making sure that because the cat decided to help as well. So we've, if you see... Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I've, I've shut her in a different room today yeah. because her um, her behind was not what everybody needed to see last week. <laughs> Again, apologies for that. Right, dandelion leaves, obviously. You can look at the images that I've supplied with the pattern and position them the same. Mm -hmm. um, or you can you might have your own ideas of where you want your dandelion leaves. There's no there's no there's rules. There's no hard and fast rule here. But obviously it does look better if some have set be slightly behind the rabbit and some to the oh, front. Okay. So don't put him on there and press him down to start off with. No, no. Uh, let's see. Um, Audra says what's a hoover? Good 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 <laughs> question. Oh I like that one. Uh, <laughs> Dectarian Clarence. The cross-eyed lion was Clarence a cross-eyed yes. one as well. Okay, they're all they're all at it, aren't they? I know. Um, Syl says, does anyone know what the silicon mat thingy is called? It's a, is it a sugar work mat or something? That's yeah. Oh, Ali's already answered you. There we go. Well done, ah. Ali. She's on it this morning. Morning, Vic Victoria. Pete's watching. I wish she. Hi, Yay. Vic. <laughs> yeah. um, and Anna says, I used to sing along to Pippi Aru theme tune. Loved it. What's that? Pippi Aru. Don't remember that one. It's Pippi Aru. Is that some sort of no Kangaroo-based something. Don't, Don't need know to that one. Take anything off for your. Um, all right. Flowers. You've only got one. I'll give you the fiddly ones. Oh, you thanks. Want, yeah. Do you want? Thanks a, for your friends. A pin. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah. Actually, this is a good point. Actually, a pin for for to scratch. You just scratch the back, don't you? And yeah. If, and if it doesn't come away easily, then you possibly haven't pressed it enough. <coughs> and is don't don't try and do it when it's war when you've just done it and it's warm. No. No, it that's not going to work either, is it? Yeah, it won't work. I have to say, I've really enjoyed actually doing this with a, with, with a companion. Oh, right. <laughs> so, you know, if you do have someone, maybe you've got a group or something, then, you know, it's just been, it's just been nice. It's, it's a nice, if anybody company. sits, you know, if anybody has little clubs where they all get together. And yeah. So I'm not saying coffee, but certainly a few vinos while they're all sort of there with the vinos, sensions. coffee, cake. Yeah, I mean, options, snack options. Yeah, I think keep keeping options open there. I'm just looking at my image. I'm just going to sit them roughly ha as they were. Now dandelion leaves. Out of curiosity, you might look at them and think, oh well, which is which was the right way up for these dandelions? Do they have a right? Way now, if way? you look at a dandelion leaf. Yeah. Now, I didn't know. I, it was have only when I was doing some sketches of dandelion leaves and thinking, dandelion-based research. Yeah, I have. Do you know how to live. Now, when you... <laughs> I need to get She's out She's out more. looking at the dandelions again, everyone. <laughs> I need to get out more. Um, but if you look at dandelion, when you're doing leaves, you often think of veins sort of up or sort you're of You're branching arched. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dandelion leaves actually flop down. So yes, they get yeah, out and down. So yeah. that would be the right way up. Yeah, because they go down. So, so these sections are going down. But quite honestly, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but if you wanted to be pedantic, you know, that is what a dandelion leaf does look like. So I, I love that we, we have this we have this level of expertise in the <laughs> in the dandelion department. <laughs> I there don't we think go. anybody's I think everybody lost interest after the rabbit was done now. Oh no. <laughs> this, you know, this is but that's like saying when you put um, when you put some sort of beautiful uh, floral display together, yeah, you need you still need the greenery in the background. Yeah, 
it just it brings it all together. I think it? I think the green mm. just helps make it pop. Yeah. Uh, Lorraine says, "Morning, ladies. Only just got in. Looks like you're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we are. Thank you for joining us. And um, you can watch again if you missed if you missed the bunny. Um, but you can watch it on the Facebook page. You can watch it on YouTube, or you can watch it on the website www.natashamakes.com. Details down there, and that is where you will find the pattern. It's where you will find the kits to either do them in this lovely fawny type colour, marmalade. I think you called it. Uh, yeah, I there's, think it looks marmalade. There's probably um, as much as you are now. That an doesn't mean it's orange. It in just... dandelions, <laughs> there's probably an expert in rabbit colours out there, and we're probably saying all the wrong things. I know. Or, um, so we went with, I think we called it neutral tones or light tones and dark tones. That was as technical as we got about that it. That kept, it just kept, keeps it simple, yeah. doesn't it? Um, and they are all on the website. And if you buy the kit, one of the kits and the instructions, then there's a little discount for you that we've added on. <coughs> and Sarah is um, watching now from sunny Portugal on holiday and <gasps> loving the demo. Very nice too. We do get international watches. Watchers, viewers. Yeah? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Um, oh, Ali's got uh, images of you uh, blowing dandelion clocks whilst you <laughs> did your research. <laughs> so, you see? You did they it. They weren't they ripe. Be so, um, they weren't ripe. Oh, were they not? No, they weren't ripe. So, uh -oh. yeah. So, no. Right, <laughs> flowers. Get rid of that image then, Ali. Yeah. Psh, cast that one aside. Ali, have you got storms? She was getting a bit windy last night. Oh, Where she lived, not, you know, anything else. I remember my dog, though, weren't going up to one and sniffing it and sniffed all the seeds up her nose and she could not stop sneezing. But that, and, but it was hilarious. Right, with this yellow, just make sure <laughs> you've got the right side because... They look very similar, and obviously, if you put your iron down and it's the wrong side, it's going to stick to your iron. Yes. Um, so don't just do that. Don't do blue. that. You watch me do this now. <laughs> it's fine. It's my iron. It's my iron. Um, Sue says, "I'm so loving this demo. Kath is very talented. Yes, she is. That's why I want to." <laughs> and uh, Cheryl says, "Fab demo." Uh, yeah. I think we'll have one go in there. There's a couple of with the little buds. There's only a couple of them, but there's a couple of like green bits that go underneath. They actually just sit behind the little bud because there's always buds opening. And I think I've got that. Certainly with dandelions. We were discussing the joy of weeds, weren't we? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. The little terrors. I think that's more or less there. The stalks, um, they're just basically a satin stitch, a narrow satin stitch. That is just curved. I don't know if you can see on the image. Oh, 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 they're, okay. never, they're never straight, but because it's a satin stitch, a yeah. close satin stitch, I just narrowed it off. So it's about, um, oh, I'd probably need a tape measure just to have a look. It's not very wide, not very wide at all. It's about two eighths of an inch, I think. Just so, what, three, say maximum three eighths of an inch. In terms of, it's just. That is in centimetres, isn't it? That's so, inches. Yeah. So, well, if we do it in if we do it in centimetres, uh, just less than half a centimetre. Okay. So, if you set your machine up, me when anything, when I'm doing anything like this, I always have some scrap fabric with some wadding underneath, and uh, so it's built in the same way as the actual cushion. I just slot it under my machine. And I just keep jiggling with the settings till I find the right one and think, yep, yeah, that's the one. And then I just take and do it, it. And put the rabbit out. So you don't like mark it down. But or if you make look at dandelion stems, they're never in a straight line. They always have an arc. Yeah, they do. And some have even a wiggle. <laughs> but I kept all mine arced. So yeah. So um, do we need to press that down? He's ready to go and press. Yes. So he Here will he be. Goes. Yeah. Here we go. So. Obviously, make sure there is some, it'll be your flowers and your dandelions that'll start moving and jiggling about. Okay. How Don't do sneeze at this point or no. open the window or anything else. Watch me stick a dandelion fly, flower to the iron. So far, so good. Yeah. Let's not tempt it. 
So we're going well. Oh, Barbara's joined us on Wednesday morning. Oh, and Mrs. H. Mrs. H is oh, watching. Oh, hi. She's, when are you back on, Mrs. H? I'm just trying to think. I think it's later on this month. Is it, is it this month or next month? I can't remember. Um, so, lots of people who have bought the pressing mats have asked if it's okay to press onto their cutting mat. We have. Not been a problem. Oh, right. I've not, well, I've not used one, so consequently... I'm eager to uh, experiment with mine. Fortunately, I'm in the process of sorting out a new cutting mat because mine's seen better days. But this, no, this has been absolutely fab and very portable. And only available with us. <laughs> it's even better. Okay, I think he's more or less ready to go. Now we have got a couple of things to sort out with the pattern because it was my first pattern although I proofread the dog quality checked it uh oh are we blaming the dog is that all we've come to Kath we're blaming yes. the dog <laughs> <laughs> um what has the dog there is done? only me there is only me in this department unfortunately um and it's there was one thing which this. I knew which is just a minor thing it's just a step missing out of the instructions but all it is is at this point now you could put your wadding behind before you start to stitch okay that's the only step that's missing um this wadding yes Whew. i remembered i remembered to get it for you <laughs> right how big do you want it um it wants to it just roughly cut around the edge what all i do is i usually lay my cushion front i, I usually lay my that. cushion uh, cover over the top of the wadding and I just roughly cut I don't can do I show you one of my new, my new toys then oh right this is my newfound favorite thing I'll just get rid of this rubbish so any excuse to uh, to get it out do you do you base that down with anything I usually put a little bit of spray on just to stop it moving would but you like some spray uh, yeah it would be very useful bear with Bear with, I've got a bit of that as well. Do you spray onto? No, I just spray a little bit on the. It's just that. Uh, it's just mainly for the centre. And I just allow a little extra around the edges because obviously, you know, when you when you're doing free motion. Oh my goodness. Yeah! <laughs> Love it! You got it out of your system now. <laughs> Any excuse? Honestly, I saw them at, um, at uh, oh, where was it? It's Stitches at the big right. trade show. Absolutely loved it. It was from um, the guys that bring me Majuki machines, and they'd spent so long trying to find a really good quality one. Right. So they're not cheap, but they are amazing. So if you ever struggle with your hands, yeah. you've got loads and loads of cutting. And also, if you do dressmaking, you've got your pattern weights down, it just slides. You don't have to lift the fabric at all. Oh, so you just literally just you rest literally it on literally just, the, yeah. yeah. And it just, <laughs> just goes. Oh, crikey. No, no, I'm not having one. <laughs> Right, let's have a look at this machine then, shall we? Um, oh, do you know what we didn't do? Put the. Um, can you just can you thread another cotton through? Yeah, of course, can. Um, of course can. Because we we did look. We didn't at do that. Do you need? Um, okay, so let's talk then about. I think that one will work. So it's just because it's a variegated. Okay, so we've gone with a variegated. Yeah. Because is that going to enhance or I, what, why the variegated? If you look at, and I don't know what I've done with the cushions, I'll do it on the blue one, the batik version. Mm. I don't know if we, can we get a close-up? Sure can. This was done in a variegated. There you go. That's it. And it's sort of got light and, and darker blues, and it goes through to almost a silver grey. And um, what I find is when you're using sort of two or three sort of mottled shades, I find that you don't lose the detail um, in the stitching, but it adds another dimension to it. Yeah, uh, now, yeah, extra fur. Now, this one is probably, it, 
it is shiny <laughs> so if anybody's thinking gosh you know close up I can th there's a shine on that one there's different brands of uh, variegated thread um, I've used I tend to g use Guterman um, I've used the sulky range oh, okay yeah solids um, some have got a sheen to them and some haven't right and i even used a variegated in the dandelion leaves as yeah. well which worked really well oh, cool. um but you don't have to you could if you wanted a sketchy looking rabbit you know where where you did sort of the Poor sketchy chap. lines um then you could i mean obviously you, you can use solid colors it's yeah. not it's not an issue um but what i do i would be tempted with this particular one, I, if I was doing plain colours, I would probably use two. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just work your way through. I would probably use one to pull out the darker tones. Right. And then I would use a lighter tone, which is probably in between that colour and the creamy colour. Oh, okay. All right. Um, but it's entirely up to you. But I just happened to bring a few variegated cottons through because I didn't know. I knew roughly the colour scheme, but Do I didn't. Do you want sorry to interrupt do you mm. want the bobbin the same no doesn't matter why waste your variegated cotton on the bottom bobbin that's my philosophy what i tend to use is if it's a light color i'll use for a neutral sort of um camelie color it's gutterman i believe it's 7022 i use but i can't remember off the top of my head but it's a sort of a very pale beigey color okay um and i use that that's my sew all thread that's I always have either black that color um, a cream I occasionally use a creamy color if I am working with very light colors on top yeah. um, and I use two shades of gray a darker gray and a, a Not medium. 50 mm -hmm. just two yeah and I have loads of that I've got I've got about <laughs> three or four reels of each color because that is all it. I that's use your in my go -to. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, the uh, because the because I use Gutermans a lot, I do I do play around with metlers as well. Okay. I've just started playing around with metlers. So there, these are all polyester threads. You don't use cotton ones, no, or anything like that. No all polyester. No, I don't um, want some cottons. I've even, I've tried cheaper cottons, um, and when you're doing free motion, you just get sick of the snapping. Oh, okay, that's a thing. It right. doesn't. Because they're cotton threads, I can't get them to run right. Now, maybe if I wax them, if I had a wax block that it was running through. I know when uh, I used to use a knitting machine years ago and design for Machine Knitting News, um, all my threads ran through wax bobbins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they were going through the machine, it ran much smoother. Oh, okay. um, and I'm assuming it's the same with any thread or cottons. Um, I've not tested them so i can't say whether it would make yeah. any difference yeah yeah so i i prefer to test theories before, test yeah. practice before i actually say oh do it this way you know but it's Fair i'm enough. not endorsing anything without trying no no it. no that's fine um so yeah but on this i just think it works with variegated threads but it cool. will work just as well with planes He's so. looking lovely. And what I really love as well, because I don't know if you can see, and I don't know how much you'll be able to see afterwards, but where you've placed him and you've got the darker, you've got yet another tone yeah. coming through. Yeah. So clever. So <laughs> clever. <laughs> That's why it's hard when you're trying to pick fabrics from the internet. He's got, it, it's a lovely watercolour effect on that it's fabric. beautiful, isn't yeah. it? Really yeah. Really gorgeous, really gorgeous. Okay. So right, this is where the fun starts. To the machine. Yes. To the machine. I'll oh. warn. I'll warn you, folks. I've had two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> You're not nervous at all. It's all good. It's all good. I've, I've had two else minutes practice. I'm fine. Uh, uh, I'll find it in a minute when you get stitching. Right. I'm just gonna. I think I'll start with an, an easy part first, actually, just to get my feel for it. So, what do you count as an easy bit? Um, something with not a lot of cuts in it. So right. where I am starting is actually this bit has got some nice, if I can lift that up slightly, just I'm just trying to get it so that you can see it, that's better. This little section here running down here, there's very little. It's quite smooth compared it to is. some of the other bits. Um, I like to get, you see normally what I do is I'll have a piece of, piece of fabric 
um, I'll throw a couple of pieces of fabric on top. I don't even glue them. Right. And the, just to give it the same texture. Yeah. So I've got the wadding, piece of, a larger piece of fabric, a few smaller pieces. I will slide it under my machine and I will just literally get my motion going. Okay. And I'll work in the stitch type that I'm going to be using. Now, the stitch type I'm going to be using is basically, it's a rocking forwards, backwards. Okay. So... And you literally just get into the groove. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. So, he's a hairy rabbit. You can have him as hairy as you want. He's a mm. hair, not a yeah. rabbit. Oh, he's a rabbit, not a hair. <laughs> um, you do need, a, you know, you've got a lovely smooth edge here on the, on the rabbit. Hang on. Let's show that. On his ear. Here yeah. This really flat, smooth edge here. But you still, it, it still have fuzz. It'd still be fuzzy. Yes. So fuzzy bunny. We are still going to be working in a backwards and forwards motion. But what I'd do is I'd angle the stitches. And the best way for me to do this is to actually show you. Okay. Because it's, I've probably, probably lost a few of you now. Um, no, 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 no. No, no. So it's all good. It's all good. Right. Okay, let's Let switch me you across just then. Go. Oh, press the foot needs to go down. Oh, mine, mine will actually. It will just do it automatic. Well, it depends. Um, no. Let me put it down for you. There ah. you go. Right, I'm not even going to worry too much about my. Where did the tail end go? Is it buoyed? Yeah. It's all right. <clears throat> I've not used a Juki machine before. I'm a Janome girl, so consequently this is going to be really fun. Oh, Jean says that she's bought the pattern and she's looking forward to practicing free motion. Ah, brilliant. She says, uh, great, I can look back to the programme when the time comes to play. Yes, and also, Jean, the other thing is that Josh is working on a, a place on my website where all the videos will be kept so, that you, so they'll never be lost anywhere. They'll all be on Facebook. Now, can we move that left hand? Oh, sorry, I remembered now. Yeah. So just that backwards and forwards, backwards it's and forwards. It's just rocking. It's all right. I was just trying to get my speed right. Yeah, I think I've good. just about there. Now I'm going to continue around the top of this here. Now don't be frightened to stop. Make sure that obviously when you've got your sewing machine, when, you, when you're running on your sewing machine, is don't be frightened to stop. Make sure that you've got your needle in the needle s to stay down. Yes, yeah, so there, there were I've a couple of things, weren't there, with yeah. this machine? Because I know that a lot of you have gone for the DX7. What did it do then? I, I didn't press anything. Ah, ah, I didn't take off the foot. The, there's a thingy on the foot pedal as well which I should have taken off. Oh, wow. There's a, yeah, so if you, <laughs> on that bit, if you press that bit, it might, I don't know if it's just cut the, that hasn't it, it sounded like it had cut the thread. That's why I said what I've done. It doesn't matter. No, no, it hasn't. No, because the thread's still yeah. on there. It's just lifted your, your everything up for you. Oh. It thought that that was what you wanted. Oh, right. I so can take that off. So it, when I've, it's all right, we're talking jukey now. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is it. So the machine has lots of different things and I have it set up for, all the things that I've been doing. Mm. And we changed a few things for you. Um, we <coughs> put the floating foot yeah. on actually, which means that, that, that the, the foot that you've got on just floats really nicely above. Yeah. And you can set that to different depths. So depending on what depth of um, wadding you've got, that's right. You can set it to float. It's also uh, used when you work with velvets and things like that. Gorgeous, fabulous. So that's been really helpful here. We also set it to keep the needle down. Mm, yeah. Um, every time you take your foot off, the needle goes down. So you can have it so that the needle's up or needle's down. Um, but the foot pedal does have, on the heel of it, it, it will do other things. Right. So which Gary put on last time he was here and I completely forgot to put off, take off. So yeah, just it's lower the, there you go. That's the one. Off we go again. It's like driving somebody else's car, isn't it? It is. Now, obviously, I'm just starting to change direction a little bit here. Now, I prefer sometimes to just turn it right the way round when I'm working down. I like to see what I'm doing. Now, I can see now that edge perfectly, whereas when it was round the other way, I'd have been going backwards on myself. Right. This is why... 
just keep the needle in there's no issue you yeah. can just and once you get used to your free motion you'll just be able to go i can already start to feel that i'm loosening up it, it, it is as simple as that. But it's like anything, isn't it? You, you When you come to it cold, yeah. you do just need to. So you've kept your needle down, you've spun it around, so you're going backwards and forwards now I'm in trying, an opposite I'm direction. I'm just conscious of my hand. Oh, I, hang on. There you go. Turn it is it still in the way? No, 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 you're good. You're all good. You're all good. Now uh, I am just literally up and down Sometimes I go down the same route as the last line I've done. Other times I don't. Now, when you're going over the edges, just try and make sure that each time you're doing, they're like an elongated V, long and short. Right. Just try and make sure that you're um, trying to keep a reasonable distance so that where you're covering the edge of the fabric, it's a bit hard to explain without actually physically taking it out and showing you. We can do that in a moment, can't yeah. we? Yeah. Um, whilst you're in your flow, I've got a couple of uh, questions here. Yeah. Gail, um, if you email info at natashamakes.com with your order number, then we can look at that. Just be aware that when you make orders, they because we do direct dispatch, they come from different warehouses. So the order times, if it's come from a different warehouse, right. then the order times will be different. And I know that with the weather, some of the ones that have been coming from abroad have taken longer. Yeah. Um, but just send us your details and we will, because it should have been there by now. Um, Val says, can you get the electric scissors? If you look on the website, www.natashmakes.com, the electric scissors are on there. Just search electric scissors and they will come up. Um, and... Claire says, do you have to sew it down with a fancy stitch or with a simple stitch along the edge be enough? You could go right, literally, go round with a straight stitch. Um, if you're using a standard foot or a, a walking foot even, I think you'd struggle with the walking foot with the detail. Okay. If you mean going round with a free motion, just going round the outside without putting the hairy lines in like I'm doing, yeah. Yeah, and yes you can. You can. So you can. you can make it your own in terms you can. of how you want to Certainly. do that. Certainly, yeah. 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 And as I say, it'll, it'll, give, it a it'll give it a different look. It'll give it a sketchy look. Because this is, I mean, this is what we um, spoke about with some of the designs that you've got coming up, is yeah. that some will be done with free motion, but some will be able to be done with a blanket stitch. Blanket stitch is, I love the folksy look. He's less suited to a blanket this stitch. This particular one, but... Because he's quite detailed. Desmond but Donkey <gasps> can be done We haven't way. spoken about Desmond the Donkey. Jan Hill will be... I know. going crazy. She's, she's waiting for she's Desmond. She's waiting for I don't know where he's... Uh... Where do we put Desmond? Oh, there he is. Oh, here he is. Oh, just you wait. Just you, my mum will love this one. Desmond Donkey. Desmond. Now, I've done him free motion, but in actual fact, because of the lines, because he hasn't got the detail in like the rabbit, yeah, he yeah, yeah. will work really well with the blanket stitch and it'll give him a totally different look. He'll be fabulous either way, and won't he? Do you know what I thought as well? <laughs> if you if you switched the it round, you could actually make a quilt where donkeys are looking at each other. Oh, no. Nice. So you could sit them in a box. So but chatting I was thinking, over, the, over the gate. If anybody's familiar with Andy Warhol. Yes. Yeah, can you imagine him in psychedelic colours? Can you? Can yes. you see him? Yes, I can, actually. Yeah. Yes. In psychedelic colours, but, you know, totally non well, he could be. Well, he could be the block, couldn't he? You know, and, and yeah. that, could be, that could be it in all the different colours, exactly. like Marilyn. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you could do him in purple tones, bright red tones yellow tones so yeah and th that'd be great for a kid wouldn't you think that'd be really Psychedelic good for kids Desmond Donkey. um so if that is something you'd like to see message in and uh, and we'll see if this is all we can do <laughs> psychedelic donkeys uh, you saw it first here yeah well as i say just an idea it's just an idea ideas oh, that was thrown around but as i say any of the patterns to be fair you know where, what i've designed for cushions you can use them as a block in a quilt easily. Well, they could be the centre block, couldn't they? And then yeah. you just keep sashing as you go out yeah. if you've got... Or, um, or you're just going to end up with lots of different animals. Yeah, yeah. You could have them like, like a zoo. Yeah. I've seen some great ones that have been chopped and changed around of the applique quilts that I've done. And they've just... 
rearranged animals and added bits from other patterns that I've done. And, and that's OK? Is that great. OK? Yeah. You don't mind? Oh, gosh, no. No. And where can we share these things? In what sense? In terms of if, if, they, want, if they want to show you what they've done. Oh, right. Uh, well, obviously, uh, I'm on Facebook. Um, some people will know me under my own name. Um, I've got a page, Kath Hardcastle, textile, textile artist. Uh, which is linked to, to my other Facebook page. So you can find um, So yeah, you can you can message me there. I've just set up uh, a new email account attached for Threaded Paws, which is what the name I'm going under for the patterns. Um, so that is just purely threadedpaws at gmail.com. Okay. But it's not go. on this pattern. It was too too late. Yeah, it had already gone to print. No, no, no. That's fair um, but the majority of people who've been following these particular designs, and I know there's been quite a few of you, um, they'll know they've already contacted me. Oh, OK. They there find a way. They find a way. Message me, anything. So Desmond <laughs> is up and coming. Yep, that pattern's nearly Does ready to Does he have go. a name yet? No. Oh. Answers on a postcard, Can we? Please. Can we? Yeah. OK, so underneath, uh, names for the panda. Yep. He hasn't got a name at all. I don't know if he's a boy or a girl, actually. I don't know. It's I the don't know eyes that you do like. so incredibly well. But as I say, the good thing about this one, this one is blanket stitch. No fancy stitching whatsoever. If anybody wants to know, on the eyes, I usually find, a, if you've got fancy stitching on your sewing machine, yeah. I usually pick one of the satin stitches. Oh, OK, patterns, just to do the highlight. And choose single the single motive because sometimes it'll just come a line of circles yeah, or a yeah, line yeah. of whatever design it is. Um, just opt for the single one. Again, I always use scrap fabric with some wadding Check underneath it. and then I play around with the sizing and then I just keep putting it to one side where the eye is and think, right, that's roughly right the size I need to be. And that's when my, my make special note where your needle starts and finishes as well yes 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 because that can throw because the whole that's thing that's where you need to look at your eye and think right my needle's going to drop about there and then it's going to work that way yeah because some eye dots you could sort of oval that way mm. and some look better down so just make a note of where your needle starts and finishes when you but find also, this size because it's a satin stitch yeah. and that that's going to be quite closely done together and it's so a if you have to, to um, yeah yeah if you've got to undo it's, it and i've done that yeah we've, all, we've yes. all done it all done it um right where are we time wise how are we doing for time however long you like i don't even know what time we're it not is. it's <gasps> 20 past 22 minutes past 11. have we been on for an hour and 20 minutes yeah. have we really yeah. Yeah. Did we finish all the wine? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's nearly wine o'clock, isn't it? It's 11 o'clock. If somewhere. I wasn't driving home, I'll tell you. <laughs> For your breakfast wine. Yeah, breakfast uh, wine. <laughs> uh, Val says, I'm loving this demo. Going to... Uh, uh, giving me another thing to try, yes. Oh, gosh, yeah. And Ali says she's never done free motion yet. So this will be her first piece. So she's watching intently. Right. And Tony said, what is the wonderful fabric called? Sorry, came to the programme late. Tony, there are kits... Uh, we've we sourced the fabric because I don't, don't actually know what it's called, um, but the fabric was sourced with a texture to it, um, so that it's not just a flat plain one. Yeah. So if you look on the website, there are kits. You can either go for the light one or the dark coloured rabbit and Jasper, and you can pick which ones. And the because you need the the different the four different tones. We mm. worked very hard to make sure that we got ones that worked really well. So it's all done for you. All the hard work's done for you. And if you buy the pattern and the kit together, then you save a little, a little save. Um, and Jill Zone just arrived. She'll have to catch up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Lynn loves Desmond. <laughs> just like it out there. She loves Desmond. Um, and she'd also like to see the bunny in psychedelic colours as well. Oh, the rabbit. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Crikey. And uh, Caroline says Percy Panda. Percy Panda. Oh, um, actually, that's quite cute. That. Tom says she's a Pauline. Pauline the panda. Pauline panda. Uh, Tony says choo-choo. I like that. Uh, and Amanda yeah, because says... because he is chewing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, he is. He is chewing. Choo-choo. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Amanda came in and says, she just came in. Um, where do we get the panda one? Uh, not available yet. We're just teasing you. The that pattern one. is just being tweaked. It's it is written. <laughs> But I've got to check everything as I have made a little hash of this one where I've missed two things off. Um, and Cheryl says Andy Pandy. 
Andy Pandy. The panda. Ah. Andy Pandy Panda. Yeah. Uh, Ali says Petula Panda. Petula Petula or Petunia. Petula. Oh hello. Petula. Hello. Just posh it up yeah. a bit. Petula. Yeah, 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 yeah. Petula. And um uh, June says, how lovely to see our cath in person. Sorry, I'm late. Gas problems. Oh, June. Oh, gosh. Sounds painful. Um, I hope that's all, all sorted. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so anyone in Eastbourne, watch out for June's gas problems. Uh, right, so I don't know if you want to see any more of the... Should we actually, should we hold actual... that up so we can see yeah. what you've done? There we go. I'll let you man the machine because so. you know how to cut it. And oh. Yeah. And we were raw coming off this, so can we see yeah. the stitching? Yeah. So yeah. basically I've worked in an up and down motion. The stitches are slightly bigger than I would normally do, but it's just purely because I've got... <laughs> I'm trying to man the machine. I think they got smaller as I went along, but there it's you go. It's one of those things that it's like driving somebody else's it car. Is. It's fundamentally the same, and yet it's so different. Yeah. And things aren't quite where you left them. Yeah. So we've done... I say we. Uh, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards yeah. there. What are we going to do around the dandelions? The dandelions, they were straight stitch. They were a oh, free motion straight stitch. So I've gone round the edge of the dandelion leaf. There you go. We've gone round the edge of the dandelion leaf. Now, if you start at the base of the leaf, is that better? Right, there we go. If you start at the base of your leaf and then work literally free motion all the way around the edges this is what the other lady was asking wasn't yes. it about the just straight stitch i went all the way around the edges to the top all the way down the other side i then went round again yeah and then obviously you finish down at the base and then straight up the center and then as you're coming back down do your veins oh, okay so you go from one side back other side back down off to the side again off to the side again for your vein and down they don't have to be perfect it's the veins on leaves they're never uniform okay you know it's then it, it, just do what do the best you can but you can see especially on the light colored one this one you can see that i've arced yeah yeah i've yeah. arced them but mine aren't perfect and then the last thing i've done you know obviously the um the little uh, dandelions. Oh, you can, are you, hang on, you can really see actually on here now. You can see that satin stitch and the variegated. Yeah. For that, and then here we go. You've got your your dandelion down there. Now, oh, um, June would just like to make it known it's not personal gas that she's got problems with. <laughs> just, she'd just like to make that clear. You assumed that. I, I never I, said a word. I <laughs> I didn't like to assume anything. Uh, Michelle's watching. I hope you're feeling better, my love. Um, and um, she went. Uh, Juanita, I think that's how we say it, says, my daughter has a panda uh, called Izzy. She's grown up now. Izzy lives with me, but she doesn't have a, um, doesn't have, doesn't have room for her because she's on a narrow boat. Oh. Oh, I see. And there was another one for um, Patch or Pasha, the panda. Oh, Pasha's nice. Yeah. Pasha's nice. Oh, we'll have to mull <laughs> these over, won't we? We'll After, we've been spoke for choice with names now, haven't we? Well, we did ask. Isn't <laughs> yeah, it? that's the danger, isn't it? We did ask. Fatal, fatal. Um, um, dandelion leaves. Oh, yep, dandelions. Yep. Yeah, uh, sorry, dandelion flowers. Yes. I've literally started at the middle and worked out Wait, round. Show on this one. There we go. Yeah. Started at the middle, work up, round, back down to the middle, and then just kept doing that all the way round. And then I threw an extra couple of lines in the thicker ones. I didn't go to town on them. They're gorgeous. Um, and the buds. Oh, hello. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Hang on. Let's go back. The buds. Uh, let's drop that down to there so we can see. Yeah. Yeah. Buds, very similar. Just start at the bottom, work your way round. And then rather than going up and round that next one, I came down and then oh. worked up because obviously indicate, it just gives an indication of what, yeah. uh, of the closed flower. And then round the nose. Just nose straight stitch two rows okay and also round the eye if we can get the eye in oh look at his eye you can see just two rows and round the pupil two rows round the what i did do hang on a minute can we just have a moment to appreciate the eyebrow <laughs> <laughs> and you you can do that it's it actually is the edge of the the piece and this is why 
this particular design's got frilly edges mm. so that you can follow that and change direction lovely and then it stops there the end that piece and it works down and then you start to work that way and you just start to arc it so you're working your way round. yeah there yeah. it goes ali has a question um, she says, and this is a good question, so thank you for asking. Not that there are bad questions, this is a good <laughs> one. Um, she says, if you don't have a machine that cuts your threads, do you pull through to the back and tie off? I never tie anything off. I am so lazy, I really am. Slovenly I lady. Am. <laughs> I have, I, I mean, I do have one where it'll do the, as John Scott would say, da 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 da. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The triple, the triple, and it does a little stitch. notch. Yes, at the back. And all I do when I'm making quilts, I'm terrible <laughs> because I'm in such a rush to get onto the next one. Um, I just snip them, and you shouldn't. I just snip close to the knot when I'm ironing it at the back. Um, but on this particular design, then consequently, um, where you stop and start, as long as there's no loose threads. Yeah. What I tend to do is I'll 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 sort of start the da 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 da. As, you, as it were, then carry on going. But I that's initially... A stitch up and yeah. down for anybody that's yeah. wondering what the dirt 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 is. Yeah. It could also be the dirt 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 on the, the, yeah. the dirt dirt that on the East Enders. That's but also called that. Yeah, yeah. Well, because you're doing um, a lot of close work, doing your sort of zigzag motion, if you They're like. They're not going to unravel, it. are they? They're not going to unravel, no. And your rabbit's attached with your bond web yeah. anyway. Yeah. There he is. Let's just have a moment to appreciate him there. <laughs> so you've got dark option, you've got the light yep. option. This is this is our light option. Here we are. I think you should have <coughs> a moment. And you just put wadding on. You didn't put another layer or anything. If I was doing it for myself, because it was a sample that yeah. I've obviously created, um, I've just literally just just left it as is. But what I did do is before I put the back attach the back to it I did do stitch in the ditch all the way around on the right yeah just to keep it so when you put the back on there so that now labels it to yeah. be washed because if you don't put another layer on yeah. there then it's it's gonna you're gonna come on I would when you it push will it in the wash. I was concerned as well although on the samples I haven't done it I haven't included this step in the instructions but me personally if I was making it for myself I would use, I've, I've got old bed poly cotton uh, bed sheets. Like I cut into cushion shapes. I cut, I've cut into sort of extra large squares yeah. so that I can use it with any size cushion. And I just grab one of those and I just put it on the back. Now you could do it before or after you start doing your detail stitching. I prefer to do it after, but what I do is then put the backing fabric on yeah. when you do your you're just stitching the ditch right. around the edge of the cushion and then that just helps attach it. We've all it. got our ways of sourcing cheap fabric and for the back, got, haven't we? And, and if you've got knots, a lot of knots and a lot yeah. of matting, I, I was quite, I ended up quite good with mine actually. But if you do have a bit of a thatch behind the back here, but it looks okay from the front, does it really matter? Um, put your backing on after and then just do and your stitch no in the ditch. And yeah. then you've just got one line of stitching and it hides a Perfect. multitude of sins. Perfect. Um, yeah, I use calico. Yeah, on you know for anything yeah. like that. And actually, you can you can pick it up really inexpensively from IKEA. Yeah. Who knew they did fabric? But they do they do really inexpensive, and yeah. so that's what that's what I. What well, I as use. I say, I mean, there was a, there was a like I said, there was that one step that I missed on that one. I don't know. I think it actually. I'm learning some new software, folks, and I'm not very good in IT literate. Um, but I actually, I think a step, the way this w this software works, I think it got buried behind some of the text. When, <laughs> when before, so is there somewhere just hidden? Yes, yeah. and, and I, think, I think that's what's happened because when I went to do the donkey one, I was using the same te text which I was copying and pasting from a Word document um, and the step's clearly there. It's all a learning curve yeah. though, isn't it? Because before, <coughs> um, Seven Quarter used to do all of your... Yeah actual patterns and everything so it's it's been a case of you didn't demo them on air no 
and although you were about to, you didn't yeah. didn't get that far, and they took care of all the printing. So actually, it's been it's been that's yeah. that's why it's taken us a little while to get to this step. And I've learnt a bit from this one. Yeah, so. but great. Yeah, but absolutely fabulous. Which means that now we can go forward. Desmond's and yeah. Desmond will be coming along. Petunia, Choo Choo, uh, <laughs> etc. etc. Mr. Panda. She who needs to be named. She or oh, Mrs. Panda, uh, <laughs> Miss Ms. Ms. Panda uh, will be coming along at some point. Is there anything else we need to know? No, no. As I say, it was just that there was the step on the pattern that was missing. Um, and we realised literally two minutes going to wear that there's actually a, a, a foot missing, a part of a foot on the template, but we're going to sort that out before right. I go. So there will be an oops sheet, which I've fully anticipated. <laughs> I think I'll get used to it. I'm going to do a photograph of my dog with her, with her head hung in shame because she can actually do this oh, over can a she? Yeah. Oh. yeah. So yeah, it's um, yeah the, the walk of shame with this one. But other than that, everything's in the pattern. <laughs> okay, good stuff. But we will good make stuff. sure that you have that missing piece. Excellent. So, but it's only a small piece and it's right at the bottom of the foot. So thank we'll you sort so that much. out. Thank okay. you. Thank All you, right, then. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Oh, my goodness. There it is. That That is um, an hour and, hour and 35. I know. And yeah. rabbit, done. Mind you, we did rabbit a bit, didn't we? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Rabbiting all over the place. Um, now, a couple of things just to let you know. The kits are available on the website down there because I often get asked, oh, well, even while we're sort of doing this, can we get the kit? Yes. Kits and patterns, patterns, they are individually uh, there. So if you just want the pattern, you yeah. can buy just the pattern. If you want to buy the kit, you can buy just the kit. And if you want to buy them both together, there's a little discount on there. Um, also on there, these natty little things. Brilliant. Love them. Uh, so these are, they are just these, these little things. And I've put them in packs of 10 on the website. And it just means that you can keep your bobbin and your thread together. We want to be together. <laughs> They're on there. Tomorrow, um, we will be live at 10 o'clock. And ladies, you can leave your hat on, but it is uh, very exciting because we launched Creative Grids um, stripology. And oh. so all of my strippers, you've got to be watching, <laughs> uh, we will be stripping up a treat tomorrow morning. And we also launch some gorgeous Lewis and Irene fabric, which is glow in the dark. Oh, crikey. So if you have <laughs> anyone in your life uh, that loves outer space, and they've actually got some of the fabric. Oh, I've seen that It's range. gorgeous, yeah. it's gorgeous. And one of them is, they've actually, they've put properly on the solar system. So it's the actual solar system that they've done and that glows and up. Very gorgeous, right. very gorgeous. That is 10 o'clock tomorrow for Textile Tuesday. Uh, we are always live Mondays at 10 and Tuesdays at 10. They are our days. Thank you very much at home for watching. Have a rummage around the website, see what you can find. And thank you for your support. If you would like to share the video um, so that more people can become accustomed to <laughs> lovely Jasper and meet Desmond and yet to be named yet to be named tbc <laughs> uh then uh, then please do and thank you ever so much for watching have a lovely rest of the day take care bye bye bye